This close to the November 16th release date, the RTX 4080 16GB is certainly out in people's hands for testing, but those reviews are embargoed. But usually we start to see some performance numbers slip out, and sure enough, here we go. We've got the RTX 4080 being tested in both 3D Mark and Geekbench, so these aren't gaming benchmarks exactly, but we can still use this to get an idea of how this stacks up against other cards, and even use it to try to infer a little bit about how it will stack up against AMD's announced 7900 XTX model. And then we've also got some information coming out about the pricing as some retailers are starting to post listings. Anyway, let's jump into the performance first here. So I'm seeing this reported at videocards.com, but it looks like it's originally coming from hardware leaker Megasize GPU, and videocards.com is rating them as having an excellent track record recently on their GPU-related news and leaks. And from what I remember off the top of my head, it's hard to keep all the various leakers straight, but I believe I agree with that assessment. Now, um, what are we seeing here? So it looks like we have a TimeSpy Extreme score and a TimeSpy score, and those are 11,131 and 22,530 respectively. However, you know, by themselves, that doesn't tell you much. You want to see how that matches up against other, uh, other cards. However, um, we should also know that according to videocards.com, Megasize GPU recently posted a picture of Inno3D's RTX 4080 iChill X3 packaging, which means that this may be the model that he has, in which case it is most likely a factory overclocked model, so this could be performing a few percent better than maybe the Founders Edition reviews were. But again, this kind of leaked early info is, you know, interesting, but not necessarily going to be representative of full thorough reviews on launch day. Now, uh, it also looks like we got the full performance monitoring graphs and everything like that. So if you want to take a closer look at this article, uh, I did post a link in my description. What I want to talk mostly about here is the scores. Now, my understanding of what video cards is likely pulling for comparison numbers here is these are, I believe the 3D Mark database has some kind of average numbers for these GPUs. So whenever I post stuff like this, I always have a lot of people comment in the comments, well, you know, my 3090 performs better that, than that, or my 3080 performs better than that. Uh, it might, right? The, I think these are kind of aggregate averages rather than specific, uh, you know, best case models, ones with the best overclock, that kind of a thing. So uh, what we're seeing here though, my hair is like not staying put, whatever. Anyway, uh, <laughs> not, po not the point of the video, but hey, that's what you get the first thing in the morning. Anyway, um, the RTX 4080, it looks like they have it currently set as the 4090 is the baseline at 100% here. And that they're doing that for both the uh, 4K Extreme, uh, Time Spy Extreme and the, um, and, uh, the 1440p here. And it looks like what we're seeing here is the RTX 4080 coming in at about 80% of the 4090 in the 1440p test, but coming in at 73% of the 4090 in the 4K Extreme test. So interesting that those don't quite match up. Could it be the case that the 4080 will scale better a little bit at the lower resolution, something like that? Now you can also see how this compares versus other GPUs. And one GPU that I'd be very interested in comparing this against would be AMD's 6950 XT because um, the 6950 XT is the one that AMD used when they gave performance figures for their 7900 XT. I'll kind of sneak out of the way here. So you can see that um, AMD said up to 1.7 times faster than the 6950 XT at 4K, and then they gave a range of figures between 1.5 and 1.7. So we don't know exactly where reality is gonna line up here. Definitely notice we see more 1.5s than we see 1.7s. So definitely something to uh, you know consider when we're deciding where we should rate that performance. Also, AMD has specifically gone on record as saying that their 7900 XTX, they are considering a competitor to the RTX 4080. And so where would that put us? Well, if we take this performance number for the 6950 XT and compare it to the uh, performance number for the 4080, for example, 
uh, we could jump in and I guess we could use the 4K extra, uh, preset since I guess AMD was giving us the 4K numbers. Uh, but if we do this, we get a 33% performance advantage for the RTX 4080 in this test over the 6950 XT. So to be clear, that's over the 6950 XT. So what could we do then? Well, if we take AMD's number, and if we said, what if AMD really only gets a 1.5 times uplift in this test, right? So if we multiply the 6950 XT's result by 1.5, that would get us 15,966. And then if I then take that number, and we then divide it by the uh, RTX 4080's score in this test, uh, that gets us about a 13% performance lead for the, uh, uh, for the AMD GPU here. Now that's going off the 1.5 thing. And to be clear, everything I'm doing here is imprecise, I call it napkin math, right? This is not, right, like we don't, ha I'm not directly comparing these two GPUs, right? This is all a little kind of wishy-washy. So to be clear here, I'm not guaranteeing you what we're gonna get. I'm having some fun playing with the numbers to see what we could get. Now, if it was a 1.6 times performance uplift, uh, which is you know closer to what AMD claimed, but again, their claim was an up two, that would get us up to 17,030.4. And if we use that figure, we're at more like a 20% lead over the RTX 4080. And if we did use the 1.7 figure, that gets us a uh, this 18,000 and such score. And if we use that one, that gets us more like a 28% uplift. So it's looking like this could range quite a bit to how close these GPUs actually are in performance. So we can't give you for sure, but if, I think if people were expecting you know, it to be 50% faster or something like that. I mean, that doesn't make a lot of sense given the numbers that we've, we've actually been given by AMD, right? So uh, I, I think these would be more reasonable performance expectations. And then again, we would expect the AMD card to lose in ray tracing. But remember that AMD's announcement came with, oh, came with a pricing announcement where they're coming in at $1,000 for that XTX model. And you know that's certainly less than the asking price of $1,200 and more on pricing in a minute. We have some more performance numbers to look at. So we also got some Geekbench results. And then in this one, uh, I guess compared with the 3080, which makes sense to compare the 4080 against the 3080, uh, we're seeing 30% to 37% faster from the 4080. And specifically, again, this is Geekbench results. We have scores in OpenCL, CUDA Core, and Vulkan. And um, obviously AMD can't uh, be measured as a competitor in CUDA calculations, that is NVIDIA specific. Um, but again, you can see how the lineup stacks up here. And again, if you're looking at the 4080 versus the 4090, it looks like it's 74% of the performance of the 4090. In OpenCL, it's 68% of the 4090. And um, in Vulkan, it's 79% of the 4090. Now here again, we could take some numbers from like a 6900 XT and play around with this. Um, you know, I, I'm, you know, I already spent some time doing that already and I've got to get to work soon guys. So let's go ahead and take a look at something else instead. So let's look at the, um, the numbers that we've already been given by Nvidia themselves. Now I looked at this in my video yesterday, so I don't want to talk too long about it. But remember that NVIDIA themselves have given us some actual gaming performance numbers for the 4080 16 gigabyte. Remember that 12 gigabyte is canceled and they stacked it up against a number of their own graphics cards, including the RTX 3080. And remember that these light green things are the DLSS3, which is not exactly real frames, right? These are the AI generated frames. I've talked about this before. I don't have a lot of time to talk about it now, but it's not fair to compare it against DLSS 2. They do not increase the performance of the game. They increase the motion fluidity at a latency penalty and an image quality penalty. Anyway, the gray bars are actually DLSS off raw performance and we can compare the 4080 against the 3080 or whatever other GPU we wanted to here. That's in play, uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator. We also have F122 with ray trace on. Again, we could make the same comparison. We also have Plague Tale Requiem uh, with ray tracing off. 
and um, we can make this similar performance number. So I'm basically showing you something I showed you yesterday, which is the gaming performance of the RTX 4080. For those of you who didn't watch me already talk about this, we can see that according to Nvidia's own figures, uh, we're basically seeing anywhere from a 45% to a 54 or 53% performance uplift for the RTX 4080 16 gigabyte up against the um, RTX 3080. Now, again, if we compare that to the pricing of the 3080 right now, we see that 3080s can be had as low as $733 if I wanted to buy one right now. And then if we hop back into this slide then, that means that the MSRP is already asking for 64% more money compared to what you could buy a 3084 right now. So that is quite a pricing premium. But that's where I want to hop into the next piece of information, which is I'm seeing over here at WCCF Tech, there's an article reporting on prelimi pre pre preliminary, that's a harder word to say than I thought it would be, prices close to the RTX 4090 for the 4080 custom models. So it's looking like this was posted on Twitter by Harukaze5719. And it's looking like we've got some early uh, ASUS RTX 4080 early pricing. If we look at this image a bit closer, if it loads, maybe it's not gonna load. Wow, is my, is my computer going to literally freeze while I try to make a video live with no time to edit? Well, let's just get back out of that. Anyway, the point is we're seeing US dollars. There, it looks like they have their tough model at uh, 1,265, so not a huge, markup, you know, percentage-wise at least, over the MSRP. Uh, Canadian, we're seeing 1705 listed. And then we're seeing uh, their Strix model. So the uh, ROG Strix model here looks like it's coming in at $1,631. And guys, that's more than the MSRP of an RTX 4090. And I don't care how good the cooler is on your RTX 4080, it is not going to outperform an RTX 4090, even with the worst possible cooler. So that's rough. The Canadian listing there at $2,200. Now, if you're like, okay, fine, what about the EU? Well, have I got some news for you. If we hop on over to the EU, I can eh, make myself even more out of the way here. Uh, we're seeing the ROG Strix listed at uh, you know, 1774.17. However, that's excluding tax. It looks like when you add on, uh, add on the tax, let me see how much I can zoom in on this image. That looks like about my limit. Uh, that's showing 2,129 euros. Um, their ROG Strix uh, version here, so like, okay, this was the OC edition with that pricing. The non-OC version of the Strix uh, looks like we're at, uh, with taxes, 2059. And then the tough gaming version, it's looking like, uh, I clicked it again. Oh no, it's gonna freeze trying to load the image. There we go. Uh, 1,969, nice, tax included. So these look really, really expensive. Now this is just uh, the Asus models. So what about some other models? Well, it's looking like we do have some screenshots here of some listings. Um, we're seeing like PNY. Do you pronounce it PNY or Peeny? I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> $1,729. We've got, again, the, the ROG Strix here in the tough. We've already talked about those. We've got some gigabyte models here. It looks like the gaming OC at $1,889. Um, the Eagle OC at $1,839. Uh, looks like we don't have that one listed yet. It's looking like we've got the PNY GeForce RTX Triple Fan Verto at $1,599.90 and another ROG Strix here over 2000. So the pricing here looks quite high. Now admittedly, I'm not off the top of my head sure what the European MSRPs were supposed to be on these, um, but I can tell you right now that $1,600 uh, for a 4080 sounds like too much money. <laughs> Again, no matter what kind of cooler you stick on that thing. Now, remember that these uh, are going to be featuring the uh, cable, the, the notorious cable design. And I do want to throw in just a little bit since we have uh, a little more time today to talk about that. So I haven't mentioned the cable in a while. NVIDIA still hasn't um, put out any official statement on this that I'm aware of. Uh, reports of broken 
cable power adapters continue to come in. Now, they're not like floods of them. So this does seem to be a an actual problem, although percentage-wise of total sales, it seems to be small, but it, honestly, any amount is not okay, right? <laughs> so, so don't get me wrong here. Now, what we're seeing now is a couple of interesting things. One thing that I haven't reported on, but a lot of other people probably have seen, uh, is that it's now being... Um, uh, it's now being listed that the first known case of native 16 pin to 16 pin 12 VH power cables um, are being reported as melting. So we're seeing some coming directly off of a power supply rather than one of the adapter cables. Now, if this turns into a thing, then maybe it's possible that this is a bigger issue than just the power adapters uh, that have been shipped by NVIDIA. That's a little bit unclear. Now, um, it's also being reported here, uh, again, I'm seeing this on video cards, but um, this is according to Redditor, um, Varun Babu 008, <laughs> that the Australian retailer Techfast is now delaying the shipment of their GeForce RTX 4090 graphics cards until mid-November, and apparently that reason is to replace the power adapter. Now, it's unclear if this is, first of all, true, although there is a screenshot of an email that certainly looks legitimate here. And then if this is true, it's unclear if this is somehow tech fast, just making their own call to do this, or if this is something that's, that GainWord is doing, or if this is something that NVIDIA is having their partner cards, uh, you know, part, board partners do, and just hasn't been made public yet, that's all completely unclear. But again, something to think about uh, when you're looking to buy one of these things on the 16th. I'm still staring at my power adapter. I, I've taken it out and checked. It, it, it seems fine. <laughs> Maybe makes me a little bit nervous. Anyway, it's a shame that when you're buying GPUs this expensive, you have to worry about something silly like that. Anyway, let me know in the comments section, what are your guys' GPU buying plans? I mean, most of these are way too expensive for the vast majority of people to consider anyway. And I think a lot of people are really looking forward to next year when we'll hopefully start to see more reasonably priced cards. Because I think honestly, AMD and Nvidia need to sell out their previous generation's lower priced cards, honestly all of them, before they really seriously consider lowing, lo giving you know, good value propositions on their next gen. I hope all of you have an excellent day.